Oh, we got parent-teacher conferences. Hell yeah. This is always gold. This is going to be so great. Fruits basket set my expectations sky high. That is the face of a very doting parent. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it went straight to the university. Wait, what? What? It's suddenly Pokemon. Well, I chose Charmander, so that makes me a what? Oh, a teacher. There you go. Hey, look at that. Go figure. I wish I had done more or... I wish there was more of this sort of career-oriented discussion in high school. I feel like that discussion took a backseat in a lot of cases to the college discussion, which seems to miss the point a little bit. You know, at the very least, started me thinking about it in more clarity earlier, which would have been great. Right, right. Someone's dream is anime beach character. It's hilarious because he already has a job. I can't get over that. He already has a, a great job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh. It's not a satisfying option. Solid advice from Ino Miko. At least have a plan. Also a great fit. I mean, law also is a really, really diverse field. <laughs> Terrifying. Goes without saying. Not just any college. The best college. What was that hesitation? What's eating Miyuki? Is it concerns about how to follow Kaguya? That's gonna come up at some point. I mean, that's what all those years of teen dramas taught me. You gotta go to the same college. I had a high school girlfriend that I was super in love with, but I had such trouble in high school, I just couldn't imagine going to college. And my grand plan was to go to Japan and find a job teaching there, because I heard that was a thing. But, you know, being an idiot and not knowing how to do the most basic of Google searches, I didn't know that you couldn't teach in Japan without a college degree. But I went and worked at a farm and then would make trips into the city trying to get a job and just nobody was having... I mean, I think if I was older and knew what I knew now, I probably could have made it work just through loopholes, but I didn't know the world well enough. And then adding to that, I found out that my high school love had found a new guy and that just activated all my deepest jealousies. So I came home basically crawling back on my hands and knees, ended up uh, challenging him to a fight, not realizing he was a champion wrestler and had just come out of military school. He solidly defeated me in battle. <laughs> He's not one of my best friends. It's actually one of the best things to come out of this whole story. But despite all that, I got back together with that girl, but then she went off to college and I really wanted to be with her. So I decided I was going to get into a school near her her, but I couldn't get into any schools where she was, so I had to start locally. The problem was the semester had already begun. It was like September 2nd or 3rd or something like that, and I was trying to apply, and the application was obviously over, but I was determined, so I went to a local school, a city school, and basically begged for them to let me in, and they, you know, told me I was crazy. And my mom heard the story, and this is one of my favorite stories about my mom. She's a really, really sweet person, but she is fearless when it comes to going for what she wants. She looked up the name of the admissions counselor at the school, found out where his office was, dragged me to the school, black Blasted through the front desk into the guy's office and basically made a case for me that I was very determined to get into the school and that I would be responsible and, and get really high grades that I needed this opportunity. And to my continued surprise to this day, he was like, okay, you can start today. Like they, I just skipped the whole admissions process for college and started that day. And so I spent that year with the goal of getting high grades and transferring to a school near my girlfriend out of state. And I did, I got a 4.0. It was the best academic year of my life performance wise. And I transferred to a school near her. And of course, as soon as I got there, we broke up. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's my college girlfriend story. Not that anyone the student council wants to move forward, but they are afraid of moving forward as well. I feel like she can do so many things. I mean, honestly, no, she... No, but they laugh, but she could do it. She's got a couple great characteristics that I think would be perfect for that. There's her fearlessness. There's the fact that she's very likable. She knows how to ingratiate herself with people immediately. She's kind, but not too agreeable. You know, like she won't back down, I don't think. She's just the right amount of conniving, and she would look good on TV. Also, she has money. I'm wondering about Kage's father. Oh, he's this, this ghost that looms in the background of the story. White cats are now in the rage everywhere. Oh, she showed up. Oh no, she's here for Kaguya. Oh no. She better also do. Oof. This plays into the insecurity she already has about not measuring up to Kaguya, Kaguya being ahead of her, which in my assessment is really only true in terms of status, uh, maybe money. This better turn into a, like a, a sweet moment where there's a But I can understand the doubt, maybe. 
This is minefield. Ooh, the jealousy just flipped. This is like a Yuki Kyo situation where they both don't see their own gifts, envious of each other. Oh, there he is. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's lame. What is it with anime just having the creepiest parents? As your future father in law and all. This guy sees the future. What point would that serve? <laughs> right, right, future father in law. Oh, this, is this a recipe for love? <laughs> so who's gonna get married? Here. Who's marrying who? They give government certifications for that? Economics, huh? Prepare for four years of trying to chart the world as if it exists on two axes and thinking that's reality. Too busy kissing. Free man. Guys, I'm vicious. Right, she already has a career. What do you want, Kaguya? What do you really want? Disappointing. This actually might end up being useful. Encourage her to speak her mind. But they're both having the same thought. Well, what is he doing? Is he gonna stay? That is a long way away. That is quite far. And he knows Kaguya's plan, probably. This is really great advice. It's a beautiful moment. <laughs> I mean, they got two years, but one year? But yeah. Wow. That's such a small thing, but it's so huge in the context of the show. Yuki Shirogani wants to make her confess part two. This is so exciting. Oh my god, Miyuki, who are you? I love you. <laughs> my little boy Miyuki growing up. Not only deciding he needs to confess, but understanding that the confession is not the whole thing. I think a good confession happens at the moment right before a confession would be unnecessary, if that makes sense. It could be a great sort of final blow in cementing the... The relationship. It's like it's already going in that direction. The momentum, the emotion is there. The attraction has been built when it serves not as a request, but more as a vow. Giving yourself to someone who doesn't want you is not really a gift, you know, it's more like an imposition. Devoting yourself, giving yourself to somebody who wants you is, is what makes it special. <laughs> Ooh, he's really taking his father's advice to heart. He's working himself up. <gasps> Whoa, this is amazing and so great. Please say yes. Please say yes. Just... Yes, please. Yes. If she doesn't go, he's going to take this as a huge rejection. It's a major setback because this is hard for him, obviously. But you, if you're still in the same moment. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, no, no, no. That was... Oh, that hurts for both of them. A simple phone call. A simple text. Oh, the rhyme You gotta return that. You gotta be oh, I misunderstood or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I thought about it and we should check out the culture festival. It's easy. Or just give him a second chance. Give him a second chance to ask. You know, just start talking about the culture festival. Maybe it would be fun. What kind of food do they have there? <laughs> nah, that's not what it is. Yes! It's top of the misunderstandings, it's painful. <laughs> Someone's gotta take the reins here. Oh, I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I mean, this is a tennis match. She just hit the ball to Miyuki. He's gotta hit it back now. <laughs> Please, God. 
or Ishigami, yeah, glowing. Expulsion. I'm sorry if I mentioned this already. I feel like I wanted to and didn't. At the high school I taught at in China, this actually was a policy. You could not date. And it wasn't a guideline. It was actually enforced. It was kind of bizarre. I mean, students would hook up and then talk about it with their friends and the rumors would spread to the point where it hit the teachers and then the teachers would grab the students and interrogate them and confirm. And students actually would get expelled on the basis of these rumors. I'm not sure what the conversations actually were in the offices. I'm not sure how much the students actually confirmed or how much of it was just hearsay. But I know for a fact that students did get expelled over this. Though at the same time, there were also students who were clearly in relationships who never got expelled. Maybe they just handled the PR better. I don't know. Or maybe their parents were donors. Who knows? But yeah, it was weird for me because I wasn't privy to any of these conversations. It's just one day, two students would be gone. And I would be like, where's Jane? You know, and the students would tell me, oh, she's gone. Got caught with her boyfriend. <laughs> that only leaves one person. <laughs> Our savior. <laughs> Please speak positively. <laughs> This is so disappointing. I really wanted them to go. You gotta just do it anyway. Ooh, well done, Kaguya. Well played. Volunteer! Volunteer yourself as tribute. Quickly before someone else does it. Oh. <laughs> there is no. We need a word for. Nunchi. There's <laughs> no Nunchi. There's no reading the air. There's no intuition. Huge L. Huge L. We were so close. At least they had fun. <laughs> Obviously. What can't you do? He wants to make her confess part three. Her talent just adds so much to her character. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the point. The point is that he ends up being great at it. Or at least adequate at it. Don't change. Never change. No. <laughs> that's not it. You could join the Body Improvement Club, though. That wouldn't hurt. Never hurts. Do I have masculine appeal? Little close, but okay. Oh no. She's so good at misunderstanding. Oh no, right. Back to back. He's racking him up. He confessed to her too. <laughs> Take a shot. Oh that bad, huh? I mean, that's tough to recover from. That cuts to the bone. Though it's definitely softened by the fact that he doesn't have interest in them either. Still, no one wants to hear that. I wonder what kind of guy Chica would like. The kind of guy I have in mind is a, is a almost a trope in real life. The kind of guy that basically all other guys hate and feel like they can see through, but seems to be really popular. Like picturing someone who's kind of a jerk in a way that gets confused as charm and is kind of lazy in a way that is confused as being carefree with gruff good looks. 100%. The whole hundred. <laughs> His ego is annihilated. Yeah, that was such a key moment. Such a great scene. Konyo, 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 indeed. That's fair. That's all right. I feel like you got to be okay with that. You got to live with that. Because she didn't call him ugly. She just said she's not his type. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful girls that are not my type. I would not be offended at all if someone told me I was not their type. It just is what it is, and it has no bearing on, on me, really. Muscular. That was a lie. <laughs> Uso daro. <laughs> Isn't it just Miyuki's face? Keep believing that, Miko. Don't settle for life. People will tell you to settle. Don't settle. Ooh, I underestimated you, Chika, and I'm sorry. But that also is Miyuki. 
<laughs> oh no. Oh no. It just keeps digging in the knife deeper and deeper. The silver lining in all of this, though, this whole discussion, is that people don't know what they want. I think there's a large part of attraction that's just unconscious. When I'm really attracted to someone, it typically doesn't start with a thought. The thoughts follow, and sometimes it seems like they're first, but there's stuff going on before that, before my subconscious pushes it up to the top. And in many cases, I know right away. And it's not only physical. I would argue there's a lot of personality things that you can glean pretty quickly about people, like in the first 30 seconds. I've actually had a couple experiences where I ended up dating someone who told me either right away or much later that they initially didn't like me or find me attractive at all. I think it would be a big mistake to take this and over internalize it to being about himself. It actually doesn't really have any bearing on who he is. And it doesn't even really have a lot of bearing on what is possible. It's just what they're saying. And that is reflective of a certain part of them and it's important to take note but I think it should sort of stay there that's where it is it's someone who is on the spot trying to conjure up deep feelings and explain where they are in only this moment of time and representative of the image they have of themselves and a reflection of their experiences and expectations about the world and perhaps not a whole lot more than that in other words not doing that don't do that <laughs> <laughs> That's how she took that. Well, she did a great job then, if that was the goal. <laughs> this is the most dangerous thing for him, though. Hey, everything is saved. Chika's opinion, Miko's opinion, irrelevant. Good. But it's not buttering him up. It's legit how she feels, so it's fine. Oh, give it back to her, Shigami. Calling her out. Did she, though? I don't think she spoke ill of him. <laughs> I mean, it's a solid advice, always. It's tough. It's tough. That no one can be objective thing cuts in multiple directions, though. Everyone has flaws that they're not fully aware of. But for the same reason, it's hard to know your flaws because you're, you know, you're always with yourself and that's your basis for comparison. It's also hard to know your true gifts because your gifts are just a baseline, right? Like what you are and what you experience is just normal. I had a friend give me a huge compliment the other day that floored me. He told me that I don't understand how fun I am to travel with, how like I breathe life into adventure, which for me was like one of the greatest compliments I ever got. But I don't have any perspective because I'm always traveling with myself. So for me, travel is just travel, right? Miyuki, yeah, he could, you know, benefit from the exercise of looking at himself more objectively. That is a solid endeavor if done right but it's also important for him not to miss his gifts of which there are many you know his gifts abound i've actually been thinking a lot recently about this kind of self-evaluation i think for a long time i had it right and wrong at the same time you know i had the same goal of understanding myself and trying to work out flaws or whatever but i think that it's walking on a razor's edge and it's difficult to get it right because what you have to avoid is going down roads that are unproductive. The goal is about improvement, right? But there's a lot of ways you can destroy yourself if you don't keep certain guidelines for this. I think it's important to avoid judgments in it and avoiding labeling yourself or attributing characteristics that are fundamental or unchangeable to your, your personality. Things like I'm worthless or I'm lazy, I'm unlikable, I mess everything up. That is dangerous because it runs the risk of seeming like truth. I think we'll take criticism and assign a higher truth value to that than praise, even though if it's that kind of like sweeping generalization about your character, they're both kind of wrong. I think the same thing applies to when you're you're thinking about whether or not you're a good person or a bad person. I would like to think of myself as a good person. I think I do a lot of good things, but if I'm being fully honest with myself, even in the past month, I've done at least three things that I was ashamed of that I felt a good person wouldn't do. So does that make me a good person or a bad person? It doesn't matter. You know, the important thing is that I don't do those actions anymore, that I learn from my mistakes and that I solve whatever the underlying issue was, recognize that I went wrong and stay vigilant about not making the same mistakes, not repeating the same mistakes over and over again. That's the only thing of, of significance in my life. The label does absolutely nothing to that effect. In fact, I think it's actually a detraction. If I was to call myself a bad person, well, that would absolve myself of some responsibility. If I was to call myself a good person, well, that would make me more vulnerable to making mistakes because how could a good person make mistakes? That's a lack of vigilance. Am I smart or stupid? Well, I've done dumb confoundingly stupid things. Am I stupid? Am I smart? It doesn't matter. I would like to not do those 
dumbfoundingly stupid things anymore and I can dispense with the judgment as a whole. All of that kind of runs the mistake of trying to trap you into one one rung, whether it's a rung where you feel miserable or a rung where you're trying to feel better about yourself. It's still a rung, it's still a trap. There's no movement, there's no growth. I think what's more useful is keeping track of things that don't feel great as they pertain to specific situations or examples and then trying to analyze what about it went wrong and what are the underlying assumptions that perhaps led to the behavior that led to it not going well. Like for example, let's say you're a student and fail an exam rather than say you're lazy, like that's a current of spirit that runs through your, your very soul. You can more directly address your studying habits, what it would take to go from here to here, and then you can do that. And then if you can't do that, well then it's like, what got in my way of doing that? And then maybe you can change your environment or you can eliminate distractions. You know, it's much better and less soul crushing, I think, to break it down into actionable steps where you identify a problem, but that problem is not an evaluation of you and your potential. It's just something to do. You know, I mean, you can even start with a concept like that, but then you still have to break it down. So for example, let's say Miyuki's worried about not being a man. That's not sufficient in itself, but okay, what does he mean by being a man? What does a man be to him? And how does he feel his current life, his current habits, his current actions not align with his vision, his specific vision of manliness? Maybe that's joining the Body Improvement Club. Maybe for other people it has to do with responsibility. Okay, well now I'm gonna make a conscious effort to be responsible for more stuff. Maybe it means not being over emotional or losing emotional control in key moments. Okay, well what do I do in those moments? How do I navigate that? That's so much more satisfying and reasonable to me than like, I'm not a man, you know, or I'm a waste of life or whatever. Bottom line, I think is that for a long time, I confused criticism with honesty. I confused attacking myself with self-development. To the show's point, you don't know. You actually don't know. You can't really evaluate yourself in terms of, you know, large categories. You can evaluate yourself in terms of what you want to do and actions you take that you don't like that you can avoid and take the judgment out of it, you know, take the emotion out of it, except where it serves as fuel to actually make you stick it through. But anyway, about the episode as a whole, very exciting that we actually got some movement. I mean, they didn't go on that date together, but still feels like a big step in the right direction. <laughs>